Okay guys, so now that we're back from, you know, our scout, as far as our route goes, and we've done our traveling or our navigation by terrain association with the map, no compass. Let's talk about how we associate those terrain features and how we understand what those terrain features are. And we'll also talk about a couple other terms that I want to introduce you to, like chair railing, because it was a perfect chair rail example on that route. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And we'll also talk about aiming off. And a lot of these are navigational terms that people use with map and compass, but they can be used very easily with just a map and no compass whatsoever, as long as you understand general direction. And general direction is very easy to figure out. Obviously, you are your own shadow stick. If you're standing with your back to the sun, your shadow is going to be cast in a northerly direction. Northerly. The sun travels in a southern arc. So it rises in the east, it sets in the west. Anytime your shadow is in front of you, it's going to be in a northerly direction. So that's very easy to understand. And then you can also look at your map once you understand where you start from. And that's the important thing with navigating by a map with terrain features only is understanding where you came from to begin with so that you can associate those terrain features right off the bat leading up to your position that you decide that you're going to start planning a route or traveling beyond a known point. And we'll talk about that as well. Stay with me, guys. Okay, guys. In the Pathfinder system, you know, I believe in the KISS method. You keep everything simple and easy to understand. So, two things I want you to think about before we talk about the map is, number one is I want you to think about what I call the five main colors on a map. And there's always going to be more or less of these things, depending on the map that you have. But these are the five main colors that are used, and I'm going to make it very, very simple. Green is vegetation. Black is generally a road. Sometimes it's a grid line, but generally it's a road if it's not going straight up and down. Brown is for contour lines. Red is, again, a road, generally a major road. And blue is obviously water. Pretty simple. Vegetation, minor road, possibly a grid line. Brown is a contour line. It can also be squares of buildings and things like that, but they can also be black. just depends on the map. Red is always usually a main road. And then blue is water. Real simple concepts, okay? Now let's look at the five main terrain features on a map. And there are more than five. These are the five main ones that you need to understand. A hilltop, a saddle, a ridge, a draw, and a depression. Okay? And what I want you to understand about these is not only what they look like on a map, but what they would look like if you were looking at them three-dimensional. Because that's what you're going to do when you are navigating by terrain feature association. And that's how all the old timers did it. Back in the day, before they carried compasses around all the time with them, other than on ships, you know, before Lewis and Clark, when they navigated, they generally did it by major terrain features and chair rails. And we'll talk about chair rails here in just a little while. Okay. This is a hilltop. It looks like something like this on the map. It'll be one contour line in a circle or an odd shape of some type that closes itself. And that will be a hilltop. So what does that look like in three dimensions? It looks like that. It looks like a hilltop. If you remember right today when we looked at our map, we had a hilltop and then we had another hilltop that we walked to. And this hilltop was a lower elevation than this hilltop. And here we go. Here's a lower elevation. Here's a higher elevation. This one would have a grid line going here in between the two, like this, to show. And then this one here would go here, probably, and around here. A very simplistic way to show you what we looked at today. Now, the other thing that I want to show you is this area between the two hilltops is called a saddle. And on the map, it will look exactly like that. There will be a circle, a circle, and in between those two circles, or semi-circles, will be what's called the saddle. If you have multiple hilltops in a row, that is a ridge line. The area coming down, usually at an angle, downward, from a hilltop or a saddle is a draw. This area here would be a draw going down in elevation. 
Once we understand those four terrain features, and we can visualize them on our hand, we need to think about a depression. A depression will usually show up on the map as a circle or semicircle closed that will have hash marks inside of it, like this, which means it's going down. Cup your hand and you have a depression. So all five of those terrain features can be visualized on your hand, and that's exactly what they're going to look like when you look at them off in the distance. All right, so this is the map that we use today. And I'm going to get a map out that's a little bit bigger. I've got a couple different maps here. This map is printed on waterproof map type paper. This bigger map is a blow up of a section of that map. That is the operating area I use for my school or classes. And it is, the color's been contrasted a little different on it. You can see it says the Pathfinder School on it. And it is actually printed on vinyl. So that unless you throw that thing in the fire, there's no way you can tear that up. It's printed on vinyl and I've got a larger map below all of these here that is a full scale map of the entire wildlife area and the surrounding quadrangle that's also printed on vinyl so it can't be tore up. So we'll look at this map and look at the same route we took today and talk about the terrain features a little bit, talk about chair railing and things like that. Okay, so I've zoomed in on this map and this is pretty much the area that we operated in today that we did our scout. Remember, this has been blown way up compared to a normal map. The scale on this map is much different. As a matter of fact, I have no clue what the scale is to this map because I didn't scale it. I just blew it up to what I wanted to see because I wasn't worried about the compass factor because I can negotiate this easily by terrain feature, which is what I'm trying to show you in this, in this video. So, looking at this, again, let's look at the colors on the map. We've got all the colors there. There's blue up here in this very corner, up here where it says Pathfinder School. There is some blue, so that gives us water. There is some black lines on here that indicate usually roads, but sometimes other things as well, like the pipeline on here is black. But these trails are black, and this old township road is black as well. This road here is black, and it is, it is a road as well. The grid lines on this happen to be blue. Now, these areas that are sketched in or are colored in a little bit, are actually what they use on this civilian map to show more of a depression okay these are marshes but they're also wet wetlands and depressions okay so they don't always have little hash marks inside of them but on this particular map you can look at it and tell they're next to water in most cases those are going to be sloughs or depressions or wetlands things like that and that's what they are on this map so going back up here you can see again in brown there's a dot right here and that denotes my log home. This township road runs up the hill from the road right over the top of my property right here and pretty much you can't get past about right here on this road because of issues with the roadway and the repair of the roadway because it's no longer really a road. Like I said, once you get back in here there's signs that say no vehicles beyond this point. Alright, this brown these are all contour lines here, and they're a little bit contrasty, they're not quite brown, they almost got a little green in them, but I know what they are on this map. If you look at the other maps, the contour lines are brown. And you've got elevation markers here where it says 800, so you know that that's 800 meters in elevation, or 800 feet in elevation, depending on how the map's set up. The closer these contour lines are together, the steeper the terrain. So if you look at areas on the map where the contour lines are close together like this, this is going to be a steep downhill grade. you got water here. That's obviously going to be lower than the hilltop. And the grade going down to that, because these contour lines are so close together, is going to be very steep. That's something that you also want to understand and look at when you're trying to navigate by just looking at a map. Understand these contour lines and the space between them dictates how steep or how gentle that terrain slope is. Now, there's generally 20 feet between contour lines sometimes more sometimes less these are 20 feet so every 20 feet of contour line denotes 20 feet less in elevation or more in elevation depending on which way you're going so this is 700 20 40 60 80 800 feet in elevation this one here is the hill that we stood on top of this one here is the hill that we traveled to so what did we do today what we did was we went from here 
and we traveled to here. This township road became a chair rail because we know that if we cross that township road, we're going the wrong direction. So all we had to do was travel down through here and hug that township road, knowing that when we got to the first big hilltop, because this one's still on my property, so once I got off my property, I could look at this and say, okay, there's a big hilltop, get on top of that, and now I know where I'm at. I came right off this road, I chair railed it all the way along, came up there, I looked across here, and I could see this creek that's right here. I could see this other hill that's right here, and I could see this draw right here. So I kind of triangulated my position to know by the terrain features where I was. I wanted to go over to the slough. So instead of walking haphazardly, I chose another chair rail if there was one on the map, and there was. There's a creek bed that runs through this draw, and you can see this, these contour lines going down just like we showed on our fingers. All these contour lines going down are draws that are going down into that creek bed. All of that's going to feed down to that creek bed. So we went down this draw to this creek bed, and we used that creek bed, which we knew flew all, flowed all the way down around into the slough as a chair rail. We knew as long as we hugged that creek, eventually it was going to lead to the pipeline or the chair or the slough. Now, it didn't matter if we went left or right of that because we're still going to hit the pipeline. So if we would have went off the creek bed somehow, or we couldn't follow the creek bed because of vegetation, or whatever the case may be, once we hit the pipeline, as long as we go on the other side of this creek, we hit the pipeline, we know we have to turn back to the right. If we go on this side of the creek and we hit the pipeline, we know we have to go left to find that slough. So that's aiming off in case we had to because of terrain. But we were able to follow that creek all the way down until we came out to the pipeline and right at the slough about right here. So, once we got to that slough, we came out here and we followed the pipeline down. We could see that there was a creek that ran across here and crossed the pipeline. So, what we did was, we followed the pipeline, again as a chair rail, right along that creek until we found that crossing. As soon as we hit that crossing, we knew that we needed to go across the pipeline and follow this creek. So, again, we've got the chair rail on this side. We know as long as we're hugging this inside, if we get to the pipeline, we're off. As long as we're watching the creek, we're on. We're walking down through here, when we got to this Y, and you can see it on this map where I've blown it up, that there is actually a pond right there, but it's not showing up real well on the smaller scale map. But once I blew it up, you can see that that pond is there. And there's that big beaver pond that we saw right where the Y used to be. And just like I said, there's a creek that runs out of it or into it from here, a creek that runs into it from here, and everything runs downhill into here and downhill this way. And there's a confluence right there at this boggy area where our slough is. Our camp is sitting right up in here. So all we had to do was go across here to get to our camp area. We knew that because we could see this hilltop and we knew we were standing right here. So all we had to do was look across there to the hilltop and we knew somewhere in this area of a triangle is going to be our camp. So all we have to do is walk up to that to find our camp area. And that's how we did use terrain association and chair railing to manage to navigate this map with no compass. And it's not that difficult to do, but it's something that you need to practice, you need to understand how to read the map, what features are on the map, how to identify terrain features. Real quick guys, I want to give you just a little tip or trick. Okay, remember I told you that these maps are printed on vinyl. This is vinyl sheeting. I had these done at Office Max. Basically I just went to mytopo.com got a picture of a map that I was going to purchase, import it into any program that does photo editing, and blow that thing to any, way, any size I wanted to blow it up to. Then I just took that file, I just took that file and drug it onto an SD card, took it to Office Max, and had them print this map that was blown up of exactly what I want on this vinyl paper. If you can get, this costs six dollars by the way guys, eight and a half by eleven costs six dollars. The advantage to this vinyl is, obviously, it's totally weatherproof no matter what. It's totally tear-proof. You're not going to hurt it even if you bend it up. You're not going to hurt it any. It's very, very thick. The other thing I really like about it is you can write on this with pencil anywhere you want to and then just take an eraser and erase it. No dry erase markers, no messing around. All it is is pencil, and you can just erase it right off of there. All right? So, like I said... That was just something I wanted to throw out there to you guys as a tip or trick for your maps and things like that that you're using. If you can get them printed on vinyl, 
you can erase them pretty easily and they give you a really really nice map that you can carry and because they're vinyl you've got the back side that you can write notes on and again you know same thing you can just erase it so you've given yourself kind of a notepad or a dive board type of situation with a map on the other side well, guys i appreciate you joining me for another video today out here at the pathfinder school i appreciate everything you do for me for my school for my family for all my sponsors friends affiliates and associates I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.